Hey yo, hey yo. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, here, I guess that fits you next time. Sorry about that, Frank. <laughs> Hey guys, quick shout out to Soundmint. They have provided the music for the NGMI podcast and have been kind enough to sponsor the show. So definitely go check them out. We'll link them down below. I'm a big fan of what they're doing for music in the Web3 space. Like the team over there. And again, want to thank them for sponsoring the show and providing our wonderful, wonderful music. Welcome back to NGMI. A very uh, respectable and serious podcast where we talk about just the all the joys of Web3 and none of the shitty stuff with extremely consistent sets film in the same place every time yeah optimal setups mic arms uh and amazing guests like the guy right next to me frank hey guys what's up yeah so we have we have a <laughs> S S up. solana's favorite uh bank robber uh frank <laughs> d gods with us hey what's up guys nice to nice to be on ngmi uh you know this is the hottest podcast in the fucking world right now so i'm excited okay. to finally get a chance to be on Thank you. Uh, yeah, we recently just uh, passed uh, Joe Rogan and, and uh, listeners. So yeah, I heard about that, man. Yeah. He was not happy about it. Yeah, he wasn't. Web three taking over, my Dude, guy. We are. <laughs> yes, sir. Can we get a Can we get a formal intro from you, bro? Yes. Um, hey guys, my name is Frank. Um, I run this project called D Gods. It's on the Solana network, <laughs> and uh, and we're trying to just do really cool things and innovative stuff with NFTs. And um, we have our new project NFT. Uh, very soon. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Cool. That was a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> Showing yeah. is over. Yes. Um, that was that was a great intro. Uh, I'm not gonna make any Solana jokes. I'm not that kind of. Yeah, yeah it's person. played out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay, so the network out. fucking goes down. All right, bro. I got it. The network goes down. I never heard of that before. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Don't worry. Yeah, perfect. yeah it's great. Perfect. It's perfect. Um, dude. So, how long? Like. How long, like, when did you start D Gods? Um, friends and I started it back in uh, late September of last year, and the official mint was October 8th of 2021. So we're kind of like boomers in this space at this point, it's been like nine months. When's the rug? I'm still figuring that out right now. It's crazy that we haven't rugged already, but, uh, you know, reading the market, we'll see when the right time is. Could you talk about this hoodie a little bit, man? You, you mentioned earlier a little something called, called NFT. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a couple of viewers that, that would be interested in, in what you got going on, what you guys got coming up. Yeah, so this is like a hoodie and it says happy on it. Um, and like, that's just the vibe, right? Like we just want to be happy and everyone's kind of sad right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a test piece of merch for you. I doubt we'll actually like launch it, but um, my boy ordered it and now we have one and some wearing it. Love yeah. that. Do you have any clothing that isn't like uh, NFT merch? Well, I heard that's what all the girls like. So I've just been ordering, like, even if I don't have the NFT, I'll go on like Redbubble and uh, purchase, right? Like a mutant ape shirt. I heard like chicks fucking dig that. So not really, no. Yeah. And, and we all know mutant apes. They look so good. Yeah. Uh, no. The art is amazing. Yeah. So uh, any woman would be swooning over that. So. Yeah, exactly. That, that was my logic when I bought like the uh, mutant ape onesies. So yeah. yeah, pretty sick. I've never. Yeah. That's so interesting. I love meeting people that have. New perspectives. I've I've never um <laughs> never met a woman that <laughs> likes NFT. Never in my life have I met a woman that would like me because I have NFT. It's like actively repels really uh, most most women most women that I meet. Really? Yeah. Well, there's you know there's all these girls in my DMs right now that said they like you know do, if asking if I want pro if I want to do like promo with them. Oh, so they dude. must like but you. But they're like baddies, you know. So like I'm pretty sure they're they're. Bro, man. That's that's a good offer, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was about to say something. So I've been so DMing. I know I've been DM, <laughs> I've been DMing them back, and like they just keep asking me for like my seed phrase and shit, dude. Which is like hot. That's like commitment right there, you know. Like yeah. she's like she's like like babe, like your assets are like my assets, and like I really I really fuck with you like that. So. Yeah, it's kind of sick. Um. It's crazy, yeah, like just so many fucking girls, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That reminds me of something that we were looking at before we, yeah. before, we shot the, before we shot the pod. Remember we were looking at your place earlier? Which one? The catfish. Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, apparently, um, apparently people online aren't really what they look like. Uh, sometimes not even like real people. Really? I just learned that today. I think this is an appropriate topic for, I think this is an appropriate topic for today's podcast. Um, catfish is in web three. Okay. No one's talking about it. Um, and it's an issue that is seriously like ravaging our ecosystems. There are entire simp armies that have assembled around projects that if you're watching this, like you, 
you probably know. You maybe have bought. Uh, <coughs> Kevin's DMs Sorry. are... <laughs> Kevin's DMs are full full of them. Mine aren't. Um, like I said, like... That makes sense. Typically, no women reach out to me on Twitter. I mean, you, your PFP is a mutant ape. Like, let's... Yours is a gray hair... It, it, dude, the it's not gray hair, bro. It's a fade. Okay. So you heard it here first. Put his put his you put his fake first. Champ doesn't screen. care about artists or their provenance of the the art that they're making. I just learned that word last week. Damn, that's fucked up. Okay, <laughs> good transition. Okay, let's talk about the D God's art. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm serious because yeah. like you know like I I'm ETH native. Kevin is. I'm I'm like I'm like blockchain by curious yeah, at the moment yeah bar. try curious Cardano with a couple <laughs> drinks um uh, sure for the bit I'll I'll say I own Cardano um oh shit I said I said I said Cardano because I did, I don't like to really say that word like that okay I'm I'm sorry um I'm sorry. but let's talk about the D, let's talk about the D gods art because my and this is my previously biased perspective a lot of NFT projects on Solana. Uh, to me, uh, the, the art wasn't hitting, right? D Gods was the first collection that I ever clicked on that I was like, this is so sick. Thank you. Right? But yeah. I know nothing about the backstory of the art. I don't know like who did it, what sort of the vision or like the meaning behind it was. It, the meaning, I don't know, might just yeah. be do to look cool. And then I know there were like the dead gods came into play, but I don't, I don't yeah. know what sort of the storyline of that happened. Yeah, was, happy so. to give the whole story. I think it's actually pretty interesting. So, so when we launched back in like uh, September of last year at the time on Solana, it was basically just all animal JPEGs, you know? And like me and my boys, like we were just not the, we just didn't identify with any fucking animal. So we were just like, man, well, we want to do something that's not an animal. And so, and we also want to be like fucking alphas. We want to like make it some dope shit that people would be proud to represent. So we landed on gods and we were like, yo, fuck it. Like why, why be like a fucking cat or like, you know, a lion or whatever. Let's just be a fucking God. And so that's kind of where the name D Gods came from. And the art itself, you know, the, the goal was to have a guy, to be totally honest, that looked godly, but also kind of like have this air of smugness to him. And I think like that was the, that was that subtle thing where there's people that do, you know, human based PFPs, but there is an opinion that you can put into the art. And so our opinion on the art was we wanted the, the D God to look a little bit smug, like a little bit like he's fucking better than you. And that to inform kind of like how we carry ourselves as a community and never in like a toxic way, but it's, it's really about confidence. And so when we launched the initial D gods art, realistically, like we just were not expecting the amount of hype that we got um, around D gods when we first kind of like launched the first landing page. And so to be totally honest, we rushed the fuck out of the original D gods art. We did the whole collection in like two and a half weeks and basically like just killed ourselves doing it. And, and then we launched it. And over time, I just realized, man, like, we had so many fucking ugly D gods. There were the cool ones that definitely looked sick, but there was a lot of like ugly D gods. And that was just holding us back, you know, in terms of like growing in floor price, just growing as a community. Because the issue is like, yeah, people like when the floor is just thick as fuck with all the ugliest D gods, it's a horrible first impression because everyone's default filter is like lowest price. And you just see all these ugly D gods, you're like, yo, fuck this collection. And so we were trying to like solve this problem of how do we make this art better? Because our main artist that did um, the original D gods, literally like two, two weeks after we launched it, um, Delilah is the name. Um, he was just like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I could have done so much better on this. Like, why do we throw this glow? Why do we have this dumbass fruit roll up in the mouth? Like, why do we do all this dumb shit? And so we were like, man, like, let's just redo the whole fucking collection and let's just take our fucking time and make this what we believe is the best art on any fucking best 2D illustration art on any blockchain, regardless. And that started a three month journey of what is now called Dead Gods. And um, we just basically redid every single trait. Some of them we reimagined. So for example, you turn like a shitty fucking fruit roll up into like a cool pipe that's in the guy's mouth. We turn like this dumbass mushroom cap into like just a sick beanie that, you know, looks cool on the guy. And so we just, it, it ended up taking us three months, which I think there's not that many projects that exist in NFTs that took three fucking months on their art. We, we also needed some help, so we brought in um, two people that we really liked from the one of one scene. Both of them, you know, the subtle flex is like they had like, you know, under like 100, 200 followers when we found them. We just really liked what the, the one of one art we were, they were creating. And we're like, yo, can we fly you out to LA to just live with us for the next like two months and like work with us on this fucking dead gods like mission? And um, it took a little bit of convincing, but they were fucking down. They came down here. And um, yeah, like the goal was just to have no floors. 
We wanted all the, you know, every single trait we had on there to have like an intricate level of detail, a backstory, some thought behind it. And um, dude, I'm just, to this day, I'm the most proud of like the work we did on Dead Gods because I think, man, like it, it ultimately led to the catalyst of D-Gods growing as fast as it did. Because before Dead Gods, we were pumping on the expectation of Dead Gods, but uh, nobody expected the art to be like as detailed and as intricate as it was. And that created like this disbelief rally of like, holy fuck, like what am I looking at? And that's what kind of sent us to becoming the number one project on Solana. Like that, it was that, that was that moment. So it means a lot to me. And uh, it took, it was a labor of fucking love because we didn't make a single dollar on Dead Gods because we didn't want to make it a dilutive collection and do a second collection, even though at the time we easily could have made fucking M's on just like, you know, dropping it as a second collection. But we were like, man, we want to make D Gods the best project. We don't want to like dilute the supply. So instead of making it a separate collection, we actually made it uh, an update to the metadata so people could spend, you know, our token dust and update their uh, art to be the new Dead Gods art. And, uh, and yeah, so it stays the same collection, no dilution, same 10,000 NFTs, just a new image on it. And uh, that's, that's kind of how we did Dead Gods, yeah. And that's why there's some D Gods still left over because some people didn't want to switch, don't have enough dust, whatever it is. But now I think 86% of the entire collection is Dead Gods, um, which is fucking sick to me. And yeah, I'm, I, I love the artwork. So I, yeah, so I didn't even know that, that it was like a, a dust uh, spinning mechanism. How much was it? How much dust? It, it was a thousand dust at launch, which was at the time like the equivalent of about like 40 soul. And uh, yeah, and, and that was, yeah. yeah, it was pretty intense of a price, but that's just because, you know, dust was running up and all this stuff. But uh, if you were to upgrade, if you did upgrade it, and still to this day, you basically get uh, three times the rewards of whatever uh, the daily dust emissions of whatever D gods collect. And so at the time, it was ten, you know, dust per day for a D god. But a dead god was getting thirty dust a day. And so for people that you know did it early, like it definitely fucking paid off. And even now, with everything we want to create around dust, it's definitely worth it to have a dead god. Do you think? Do you think that like there will be a time whenever the OG D gods become so rare in the collection that they're worth more? It's an interesting question. And I know a lot of people in our community specifically like do think that that's the case. What I would just say is like, um, you know, when you're building like the game mechanics, which it's not necessarily a game, it's more of like a social game, but like it is a game nonetheless. When you're building game mechanics, you got to figure out what variables you want people to focus on. And so I know there's people that are trying to, you know, hold on to their OG D god for future value, but we are gonna launch a software tool that lets you switch it back to the original PFP at a certain point. It's just not a high priority. And so to me, I, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of value. And I've said this like, you know, a hundred times, but people still do it. So, you know, hey, maybe, maybe they're right. You can't um, control the, you yeah, can't, you can't control, control the market. Yeah, you, can't, <laughs> you, can't, you can't do it, right? But I'm just like, man, I, I would definitely want the extra dust per day that you get with the dead God. Um, but hey, like that, that's kind of the thing. We're gonna launch that tool that lets you kind of swap back and forth. So I don't see too much of value, especially if you have like, you know, 86% of the collection so far, if everyone holds out, like they're just gonna get, you know, less dust a day. Also, NFT. coming out soon, the the only people that get the uh, guaranteed mint for NFT. Or, or dead god holders, not d god holders. And that's just kind of our way of like, we're trying to build an intricate system here and you gotta reward people that take actions that you want them to take along the way. And so we can't like reward d gods cause they didn't take the leap of faith of doing like a thousand dust, you know, uh, and, and you can still do it, by the way, at any time. You can take a D-God at any time and upgrade it, uh, upgrade it into a dead God. But the mechanism that makes it sustainable is that every single day, it goes up by, uh, the price goes up by 3.33 uh, dust. And so, and then when you're having, it, it goes up by 1.5. So we just hit our, our halvings emissions and now it goes up by 1.67 or something like that. And so these are just like, you know, tokenomic things that, that make the whole ecosystem. Sustainable. So is that, is that where the 3.33 came from? Well, 3.33, uh, 33.33 came from the original launch for D-Gods. We had this thing called the paper hand bitch tax, and that's actually what got us a lot of attention. Yes, the PHBT, paper hand bitch tax. And so, you know, the guys that started the D-Gods team, a lot of us came from like software engineering, all this stuff. And when we, the reason we even went to Solana in the first place, this is like, you know, for the ETH homies that are listening, the reason we went to Solana in the first place is because it was such an early ecosystem back when we, back when we launched, Magic Eden didn't even exist. Like they, they, Founded right right around the time we it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I remember I remember that. Damn. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking nuts, right? Like so so for us we were just like, man, it's a fucking open playground. Let's do something interesting you can't do on ETH. You can only do on Solana. And so like the concept of editing a smart contract for an NFT, editing the marketplace contract for an NFT, that just seemed like for us nerds really fucking interesting. And so we were like, man, what do people want? That's my whole theme with D guys. Like we just want to build shit people actually want. So like, what do people want? They want these fucking paper hand bitches to stop undercutting the floor. And so we were like, okay, here's the plan. Let's basically tax people that list underneath 33.3%. I mean, uh, let's, let's tax people that list under the floor 
33.3%. Take that, we don't control it. It goes to an automated contract that will basically burn any NFT, that, that, that the lowest price NFT on the marketplace. And so you tax 33.3% for any undercutters. The, the, when it gets bought by, you know, by somebody, they get taxed 33.3% and uh, it goes into this burn wallet. And then the burn wallet will basically sweep the floor and burn those NFTs out of existence. And that's how we started out. And that's where 33.3% came out. But the problem with this is like, it really just didn't work. And we ended up burning like Freaking 500. Never works. Yeah, it never works. <laughs> Brother, it never works. No, it, it's just fucking retarded in retrospect, right? Of course. But at the time, we were like fucking hype. And, and, and you know, say what we will about paper hand bitch tags and how badly it did not work. What it did do is attract a community of people that are interested in fucking experiments. And that is the only reason we're successful today is because in those initial days, we attracted a very interesting group of people. And a lot of people's like first mint, a lot of people's most high conviction play because it was such an interesting concept to them and the fact that we were experimenting. And so 33.3% today, the reason why we still have it, even though we, we got rid of the paper hand bitch tax a long time ago back in January, is it, it's kind of a symbol of like, it, this is my pinned tweet on my Twitter, you know, we tried some shit, we learned some shit, we're trying some new shit. It's kind of just a symbol of like, yo, this is like our roots, this is kind of how we started, but we, we moved on. But the, the spirit of experimentation is why you buy a D-God, is why you're in this community, because you know that we're never gonna settle for doing some like mid shit. If we're gonna launch something, we're gonna do something new, it's gonna be the newest shit, it's gonna be something that you've never heard of, it's gonna be something different. And um, yeah, I think that's, like that's, that's kind of where the 33.3% really uh, comes from and why we still keep it to this day. So yeah, that's the story. Paper hand pitch tax. I did not know. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. So you're the reason I got I got taxed thirty three point three percent. Oh, did you undercut? Fuck. Oh yeah, that's that work, dude. Chronic yeah. undercutter. Yep. Okay, yeah. buddy. Yeah, they call me paper hands. Uh, paper. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Have a and, and no. So the thing is, like, we actually ended up burning five hundred and thirty five D cuts oh, through that process. But here's the thing: is like something's coming like let's just say what is dead may never die and that's the alpha leak for people that are deep in the gods what is dead may never die just remember that um yeah speaking of dying i am dying inside our next sponsor is venture capital x or vcx for short issuer of the first nft giving exclusive access to both equity investment opportunities in private companies six to 12 months before they go public and to early stage web3 crypto investment opportunities traditionally these opportunities are only available to vcs angel investors or high net worth individuals who can write large check sizes of $100,000 and more. VCX is changing that by offering its cardholders the chance to invest up to $10,000 in pre-initial public offerings, pre-initial coin offerings, and pre-initial DEX offerings. Cardholders will be able to opt in or pass if they choose on each deal presented on VCX's dashboard. Cardholders will invest directly through VCX's partners, brokers, in order to adhere to securities regulations for equities deals and directly through our VC web3 partner for ICOs and IDOs where no KYC process is required. VCX also offers its members concierge services to source and skip the lines to buy luxury goods such as Rolex, Paddock, high performance cars such as Porsche and McLaren to obtain discounts at specialty partnered hotels around the world and to access to senior vice president level services at Sotheby's real estate in any geography around the world. To learn more, please visit VCX's website. And if you want to win a very exclusive whitelist spot, they have given us 25 spots to give away through a pre-mint raffle which would be pinned at the top as a reminder this sponsor as well as all of our sponsored segments have a material relationship with the ngmi podcast so please do your own research and none of this is financial advice all right back to the pod and we're back <laughs> and go. we're back that was a juicy conversation a little bit of alpha got spilled let's go but <laughs> wait i gotta start over bro i, I, I don't know i, I gotta start all right, all right. All right, so anyway, Frank, something else I wanted to ask you about uh, because as I kind of told you when we were off camera, me and Kev are trying to appeal to a much larger audience here and there. Definitely some people watching the podcast that are a little bit less Web3 native uh, or maybe haven't just ventured into Solana uh, or Solana NFTs in general. So I wanted to ask you basically, uh, if I were to present you with a person who knew essentially nothing about NFTs, nothing about crypto in general, right? Yeah. what is a D-God? What is D-Gods? It's access to, a D-God is access to a membership club of people that are really excited about building interesting things and uh, being a part of a movement that's all around experimentation, you know, in crypto and Web3. And so I actually think it's one of the best intros into entering the crypto Web3 space if you actually want to learn more about the entire ecosystem. Because there's products that are all about brand, but they're, not, they're trying to go more Web2 
And there's projects like that want to like bridge the gap and, and make their project all about like things that are non-crypto. For us, we're way more excited about making things really, really simple that are exciting, but uh, are, are all about Web3. Because my, my thesis on Web3, and this is what, you know, if you're just getting into crypto and NFTs now, especially NFTs, what I get really excited about is people keep talking about Web3 as this thing that's going to come in and disrupt and destroy everything that already exists. Personally, that's not how I see it. I see Web3 as a new type of economy and a new thing that's getting created on top of what, we're, of what already exists. Like a perfect example of this is, Airbnb and Uber could not have existed without new technology. It required the iPhone that had GPS tracking on it and mobile internet in order to actually be invented. And in the same way, what's happening with NFTs right now that excites me is like, it allows this technology of just like having, a, you know, ownership of assets on the internet that are portable. Like that allows a million different use cases and a million different things that could be created from that. And that's what excites me more about crypto and Web3. So if you're excited about what is coming to, you know, online communities how do you meet people on the internet how do you form bonds and how do you you know make money while actually having a good time and having fun and being a part of something that's bigger than yourself i think that's you know why nfts would make you excited about web3 and that's what we're trying to do here at dgods and i, I like your explanation of like web3 because it's like i think a lot of people have that like like misconception that like web3 is something that's going to like happen when it's like that's just like web3 is just going to be like normal yeah you know, like, like it's like if you want to look at it, it's like probably like web 2.5. Yeah. But it's like, uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, like when the internet happened, it's not like, or when social media happened, like, I guess like web two, like it was, there's never like a moment. It was just like, Hey guys, it's, this is a web two now. Yeah. Like it was just like, yeah. like, this is yeah. just life now. It's a, like, it's a retroactive way to look at it. Right. We didn't call web two, web two, when web two was happening, it was a retroactive way. We described that time period of the technology that was created. And, and, and one bone I have to pick here, which I think is just funny that I see in the space all the time. It's like, People are very quick to shit on like centralized platforms, but in reality, like none of Web3 exists without centralized platforms yeah. like Twitter, fucking Discord. Like these are companies that are building shit and that's all the distribution comes from in Web3. And more importantly, people are very quick to forget how democratizing platforms like YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook ads, like whatever you wanna like shit on now about privacy and all these things. First of all, human beings like picked you know, and chose every single time to just accept the terms of service. Like that's, you know, that is the fault of the companies, but it's also the fault of the fucking users and the consumers that will basically give all this shit up for free access to something. Point being YouTube, you know, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, all these content creation platforms, Twitch, these things democratize the way that people can make money creating content. Before that, you had to go fucking get signed by an agent and then you had to go like, you know, grind your way up being an extra or whatever and then maybe get a role in some movie to, to be in like mainstream content. Now people can make content from their phones and become some of the most famous people in the world. That is a deeply democratic and, and insanely liberating like process that happened and now everyone wants to shit on it. In my mind, I just think that the future of Web3 is not gonna look like recreating fucking Twitter or TikTok. It's gonna be about creating a new experience on the internet that is only possible when you token gate that is only possible when you do interesting things with, you know, NFTs, crypto, whatever it is. I personally don't know, but I'm excited to see it. I'm just bearish on people that are fudding hardcore, all this web two shit. When even to this day, it's democratized and changed millions of people's lives and ability to make money on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Those people fudding like, uh, like, web two companies are the same people who are like ordering everything off of Amazon, yeah. like watching Netflix and like spend their time on YouTube and Spotify. And it's and, like, uh, and the angry tweet says, uh, on Twitter from iPhone at the bottom. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah exactly. From, exactly. From, yeah. yeah, exactly, bro. Um, exactly. Yes. As soon as I'll say Solana phone. So let's <laughs> yeah. go, baby. hopefully the tweets send out. Though. Yeah, it's, hey, it's, hey, one, hey. it's one bad joke. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 every, yeah, it, yeah, it'll go down for 15 minutes every couple of days. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. honestly <laughs> bullish. Honestly, down, bro. Yeah. Hey, hey, tweet uh, less, no, dog. Actually, <laughs> me mental health breaks. That, like, yo, Solana's phone is actually good for your mental health. Dude, I will say people that are talking shit about the Solana network going down. I will tell you some of the most blissful fucking days of my last nine months were the days that the Solana network went down <laughs> and everyone across because now you go it's intentional then it's intentional like, like do Solana is a really mindful company it's like, <laughs> like like you know what like people's tweets are getting a little aggressive let's yeah. just unplug it for a little bit yeah <laughs> like, exactly like, dude, would people really be mad if Solana went down like as a network right now I personally wouldn't I'd be like bro honestly like now I need to chill a little bit yeah, yeah. Like, we got a hot tub at the cool yeah. Yeah. Some fucking grass. like yeah, yeah exactly and so my thinking is like every single time Solana network's gone down which by the way Fuck, you know, it's only been three fucking times. I know that's a lot. It's only been three times this year. So 
all right, guys, fucking relax. It doesn't go down every day. Point being, every time it went down, I would get excited because, like, you go on Twitter, it's all these funny-ass fucking memes of everyone. Uh, Solana pe- motherfuckers memeing Solana going down. Yeah. And that's, like, a fucking bonding experience. And um, I personally, you know, I get that it's fucking bad for a decentralized blockchain to go down and get booted back up. But, yeah, it's fucking bad. But at the same time, bro, memes are fucking hilarious. Vibes are good. I don't have to fucking, like, grind on the fucking checking Magic Eden stats or whatever. It's kind of nice, so... I'll just feel, say that. Yeah, I feel like. Oh, sorry, Chan, I feel no, like. No, no, no. Yeah, I feel like anytime Solana's like network goes down, Solana should just like tweet like posture check or like you know like oh, hydration check. Water. Yeah, exactly. Like, like no, just like some like be. like positive like things that like people should do like with that time it's down. That would so, be fucking elite. Yeah. So I, I want to come back to the Solana thing. I want to talk a little bit about the you know ETH maxis and the Solana maxis. But you 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 were talking about something earlier that like stood out to me or resonated with me because uh, it's something that. I've had my own personal experiences with the podcast is about you, so I want to hear your experience. Uh, but that's being a project founder, right? Like being an NFT project founder. I'm sure these are things that are applicable to founders of any sort of business. Uh, I mean, in crypto or in Web two in general, uh, right? But I ask because you know, in the last six months from when my project launched to now, the way that I navigate my day to day and sort of have learned to like respect my time and deal with stress has changed drastically. Um, you're obviously cracked, like <laughs> on it all the time. Uh, so I, I wanted you to speak a little bit about like what your experience has been dealing with pressure as a project founder and how you sort of navigate it on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, um, I have a very unique experience with this because unlike certain projects, we did not have a Cinderella start to, the, uh, to our journey. When we minted back in October, we were extremely hyped, sold down three seconds. That was the one moment of joy. And then it was four months of basically like everybody, um, you know, basically just saying like, dude, we're fucking up. Like we're building the wrong shit. We're not communicating properly. Like every single time I, this is my, this is the best way to describe the down days and those four months where you're basically just going down only in floor price and also just like sentiment. No, people started giving less of a shit. It was just like overall negative. I wake up every morning and I would dread looking at my phone and my, and, and you know, to see all these notifications of people tagging me on discord and you know, Twitter, people were just talking shit about me and all this stuff. And I would just dread it. And I would like have to fucking gear my brain up to like look at it, address it. And most days, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't strong and I would just ignore it and be like, you know what, dude, like we're fucking building, figure it out, whatever it is. And it felt like it was a me versus them, us versus them type of like, you know, environment. And the, the shift for me that's made this like so, um, you know, just constantly energizing. And you said I was on it, but honestly, man, like in this space, it's, it's a lot easier to be constantly on in NFTs and crypto because everyone else is also constantly on than it is in any, any other industry. Cause you're getting dopamine hits, you're getting excitement. Pe- there's funny jokes all day, every fucking day. But the, the shift for me was realizing like, you know, the people that are talking the most shit about, you know, they're coming from a you know constructive place. And uh, when it came to D gods, they're the guys that actually give the most shit. Like the funny thing is people hyped up some dumbass things that we announced and like products or whatever we're going to launch. And I realized that now in retrospect, those people that were hyping me up, even though they, they in their own mind knew that there was a fucking bad idea, they were hyping me up so they can get everyone else hyped up so they can all get exit liquidity and fucking list and get the fuck out of the project. The guys that were the really most valuable people in our, in our team were like guys like, you know, there's, I'll just shout the names out, like AK, Nemesis, G2K. Like there were these guys that would just basically FUD me 24 fucking seven. Like, yo, Frank, what are you doing? Like, why aren't you coming in today? Like, why aren't you doing this? Like, man, this idea is fucking stupid, whatever it is. And the shift for D gods, and this is a tactical thing, but it relates back to how I feel. We basically made a decision end of December to take all top 10 of our fudders and hire them all as mods. And they were like shocked. And they're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, why are you hiring <laughs> yo, us? I love that. And I was like, man, like, honestly, I look around this community and you guys are the only people that actually give a shit about what this project is doing. And that's the only reason you're in here so active, even though it's negative stuff. The last thing I want to do is kick you guys out because you guys are the last people in this fucking community that, that actually give a shit. Yeah, that's honest too. Yeah, yeah, it's real. And I was like, man, look, I fucked up. And they, they reamed me, bro. They had like, there's a famous call in the D God's lore history of like three mods, <laughs> three mods at middle of December, lowest point, D God's 3.1 fucking soul. They call, and, and I'm like, they're like, dude, Frank, if you don't get on a fucking call right now, we're all gonna just floor it. You guys are like, all right, fuck, fuck, fuck. All right, let me get on this call. And uh, it was three people, Nemesis, AK, and uh, G2K. And they basically were saying, hey, you have something really fucking special here. There's an incredible community. Why the fuck are you just like jerking off all day and not doing the right shit? Like, why are you like fucking this up? Why are you fumbling the bag? And you know, I'm like a fucking charismatic guy. I like talking, I'm an extrovert, whatever. I was trying to like 
you know, say like, bro, don't worry, you know what I mean, all this shit. And they were just not having it. It was like a stone fucking wall. And I was like, damn, like, this is intense. And it was a fucking wake up call. Like, man, these are the people that give a shit. Let me work with them, even though it might be abrasive, it might hurt my fucking ego. Let's work with them to figure out what are the good ideas that people actually care about. And that's when the later half of December, it was like when we really started game planning and plotting out what we want to do throughout this entire year. And man, like, that was like the fucking difference maker. So for me, in terms of like mental health and like building something in crypto, is just realizing that the people that might be talking the most shit about you are actually people that care the most. And those are oftentimes, it, it gets fucked because our community is about this toxic positivity, fuck FUD, anti-FUD, whatever it is. Dude, I, lo I love the FUD, but not in like a fucking cringy way where I'm like, oh, I love when people say negative stuff. I like it when people give constructive criticism. And if they're smart, it's even better about what we're doing because that is one of the hardest things to come by in any business or any industry. And that's the most valuable thing. So that's what keeps me going is like getting energized by seeking truth and seeking like what people actually think and care about. And um, man, like that's just an empowering feeling because then nobody can fuck with your mental health. Nobody can fuck with your mind, your mindset or your psyche because you're just like excited for the, when someone says something negative about you, that's actually makes sense. Cause you're like, damn, I fucking learned something. <laughs> this actually matters. So that's like what gets me going through the, the hard times hundred percent. That's like the first example of someone in like, especially like web three using that kind of mentality. Cause like, uh, like with like my background, like stand up comedy, yeah. it's like, you want the people who aren't laughing at everything you say, because like, they're the ones that are going to give you constructive criticism, which like, then you learn from and you become a better comic. It's like the one thing you never want is to like bring all of your friends and they're just giving you like sympathy laughs. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you want the people who are like, even like boo you or like probably not hecklers, but like just the people who are like repulsed by like what you're saying yeah. because you like take that information and then you like learn from it. And yeah. so, like i think that's cool especially in like this like wag me like just like circle jerk era of like everything's gonna be okay and like honestly like nothing ever is so yeah. it's like like it, that's that's really refreshing it's yeah it makes it more fun too yeah yeah I'm fucking bricked up right yeah now, break the fuck up dude i'm think you that that was a really thoughtful answer man like i think that's sort of a rare attribute um it's something that i i have tried really hard to sort of you know employ my own journey i think it's rare though like i think it's really hard to sort of take that step outside of your ego especially when you're a project founder right because yeah. like what you said about the nft space like there's this crazy dynamic where people like will pump you up and be everything you do be like ah oh, frank yeah, yeah. Like, like this is the best project ever yeah, yeah, yeah. because they want out yep, like yep. they're trying <laughs> yeah, to yep. sell they 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 might hate it the most yeah, yeah, yeah. like i want to get out of this yeah. shit <laughs> At profit, yeah. Yeah. so they're the the yeah. shillers on Twitter. Yeah. Are Champ, I love your project, bro. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's the best, dude. Hundred ETH floor incoming. Yeah, no, it's real. It's real. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But for real, like that's it's it's so backwards. The one thing that that I still want to ask you though, because like when you talk about you know hiring the ten people who are fighting the most, like you still have to to a degree you have to be the guy or whoever somebody on your team has to be the guy to filter the bad ideas from the from the good ones because there are going to be people who are fighting a lot yeah. who have really good intentions yeah but that still doesn't mean that they understand sort of the intricacies yeah. of what dgaz is trying to achieve and they're going to want you to make decisions that in the short term in their mind are best for the project yeah. but you know aren't so like when you bring those people in how are you going about being like okay guys i'll take your feedback but no that's still dumb i'm not doing that you know so I mean? th this is something i learned honestly from from startup life more than anything which is like you never want to source um, solutions from your customers or, you know, your community it's or whatever problems. it is, you want to just get the problems. And so for me, it's like people have no problem talk, no problem talking about problems. And so that's where the, the value comes in. I, I like to look at it as like, it's like once in a blue moon, you're going to get the perfect fucking idea from the community and someone from the community. And you're gonna be so grateful. Cause you're like, man, I would have never thought of that. If somebody didn't just fucking write this in the discord or tweet this out. And you're like, let's fucking go. That's awesome. But you can't rely on ideas from the community. That's where I think a lot of people that look like decentralized leadership, and like kind of DAO structures, people proposing ideas. To me, that's actually broken because people that are trying works. to propose ideas, it it's, it's an information asymmetry. So you have way more information about the project than someone that's random in the Discord might. And so they, they might just like suggest, yo, provide LP to this fucking thing or like, yo, let's uh, make some crazy announcements or some, you know, whatever they think makes sense but they don't understand the grander vision because they just don't have that information so to me it's like what they do have information on very clearly is their direct personal you know grievances or their direct personal problems that, that that's that their own personal experience 
that is the most valuable thing to mine from a community at any given time, regardless if you're, you know, a massive floor price at a low floor price, you want to tap into that shit because those people that articulate their problems in a clear way will help you understand the sentiment of the community. Is that going to give you the idea that's going to solve the problem? No, that's what you still have to figure out, but it'll make, it'll help you figure out how to address it, how to like, you know, communicate it. What's the right way to frame the idea. And those things are actually what matter, honestly, in NFTs is like, it's more about the way you communicate things sometimes than the actual thing you're communicating. And so that's where it becomes really invaluable of like saying it in the right way and addressing the message in the right way is, uh, is fucking huge. Frank is fucking smart. No, just went through a lot of shit. Dude, also, yo, he, he's also pretty bricked up, not yeah, going to lie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also, for anyone who is listening, uh, if you want to get a job in Web3, just FUD your favorite projects. Yes. I'm recommending it to every fucking project. Go hire your fucking FUDders, 100%. <laughs> I'm about it's to make some calls. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. They're doing it already. <laughs> no, that, that's... Dude, I have so much, like, just peer-to-peer, -peer, bro, so much respect for you, like, after hearing you say that. Um... Because it's the hardest thing to do, but it's also the most productive thing to do. Um, it's like you got to trick your brain, honestly, like to just fuck with that shit, and then it's like, oh, it becomes fun. Is like the unlock for me. It took me a four. It took me. That's why I have no hate for projects that are one or two months in fucking up. Because I'm like, bro, four months, dude. Literally, everyone li faded the fuck out of you guys as they should have. No volume for like days on end on a 10k project. It was like bad for four months. So. Any project that's even listening to this and it's early, bro, it's like, bro, you're fucking actually early. Like, take your fucking time, create a big idea that you that is gonna get people actually fucking pumped, and take your time on that and fucking launch it and make that excellent. And and like things are gonna work out in my mind. Like, I think that's that's kind of you know for a lot of people that are struggling in the space and everyone's fucking struggling in the space right now. So it's huge, man. Like, you gotta just focus on making sure that people actually want. And sometimes that takes a lot of fucking time to like get your brain in that zone. So it, I'm not a fucking genius. I just went through four months of literally like dealing with that shit while caring. And I can tell that you care about your project. I care about my project. So the, the most hurtful feeling in the world is when you care about something and what you're trying to do doesn't work and it makes people more upset and you spend a lot of effort on it and people are even more mad because they're like, why don't you, why aren't you a fucking all seeing being? And why don't you build the right thing? And you're like, man, well, everyone was hyping me up. Like the fuck, like everyone was telling me it was like the right fucking idea. And now I launched it and no, everyone's like, like, they told me a hundred thousand supply was a good idea. Like, what do you mean? Like oh, <laughs> different, different story there. But, um, PTSD, yeah, PTSD brother. Brother. down bad, down bad. PTSD brother. K. Yes. Yeah, uh, also, uh, yeah. Champ and I, we're going to go fight real quick because I, I owe him $10,000 from the other side, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, more than that. Seedify is the highest market cap incubator in the blockchain and gaming field. They've raised over $20 million for over 50 projects and hosted a number of projects that have done 100, 150 Xs. They're now looking to go replicate their success in the NFT space with their upcoming NFT launchpad, hosting a number of utility-based metaverse gaming and potentially even profile picture projects. To distribute these NFT whitelist spots to people who want to get them, they'll also be launching their SNFTs token on the 31st of August, starting at a very low market cap. Seedify is also dropping welcome SNFT packages to 30 collection holders besides their own. The list of the first projects having NFT sales on Seedify's platform will be released in the next couple of days. So make sure to closely follow their socials that are linked down below to keep up with all news relating utility, gaming, and metaverse NFTs. And guys, remember this segment as well as all other sponsored segments on the show have a material relation with the NGMI show and you should always be doing your own research and figuring out what you do or don't want to get invested in. So, so, hey, yo, so, 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 solar so Eve. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I know there's obviously like a lot of people on both sides of Solana and Ethereum that they title themselves as maxis because maybe they don't really have too much going on in their lives and like they just want to like really subscribe to a blockchain as a religion. So what are, what is your thoughts about being like a blockchain maxi? As a former Bitcoin maximalist, you know, I think uh, there is a big, the, the biggest issue with maximalism is that you have to believe in one very specific worldview on how the world is going to play out. And that forces you to, instead of looking for opportunities and interesting things happening, you're looking for reasons why everything else is going to fail, which is when you really think about it, it's just not an objective way to look at anything. And I, I think like maybe maximalists won't admit this. I'm happy to admit it with myself. When I was a Bitcoin maximalist, I was honestly looking at altcoins and just like 
only looking for reasons why they would fail. And that would force you to basically think of like convoluted scenarios years down the line or whatever it is of like, oh yeah, if ETH, you know, is centralized, then they're going to become like the Fed and then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you go down that rabbit hole and like that is your conviction because you're trying to fit it around one world, one world view. What I think is like probably, you know, the best way to look at it, and this is just my opinion here, is you know, you can have strong conviction in different uh, scenarios of the world playing out. So for me, I still have strong conviction in one world where Bitcoin is actually the best performing asset over the next hundred years and it dominates and all these altcoins already hit their all time highs. And like, I could see a world where that happens and that involves government regulation against altcoins. That involves like, you know, Bitcoin getting a spot ETF and that leads to massive adoption in corporate treasuries and then, you know, countries and then it becomes a global reserve currency. And like, that's one worldview. And that used to be my, my only worldview. But now I'm also seeing like, hey, there's a world where smart contract platforms actually revolutionize the way that we do a lot of different things and create all kinds of new industries on top of what already exists. And so for me, I have heavy conviction in both of those worlds. I still think there's a world where all altcoins go to fucking zero. I have no, I say that all the time. I still think that's a possibility, but it also might not be. And I think that is like the mark of, you know, being able to navigate the crypto space well is you got to have strong convictions, but be able to juggle multiple like levels of strong conviction in your head at any given time. Because the honest fucking answer is none of us have any idea how any of this shit is going to play out. And so why would you pigeonhole yourself into like one potential route of every, where everything is going to go instead of having your eyes wide open and just observing what's happening in front of you and then understanding what's going on and then like taking that information in and making logical decisions step by step. Not only do you enjoy the process more, not only do you have more fun, but I think it leads you to be actually like more accurate at predicting potentially what's going to happen in the future. And um, that is my thought coming all the way back to Solana and Ethereum. At the end of the fucking day, at the end of the fucking day, I think all of us here, because we're JPEG enjoyers, we're NFT enjoyers, and we like NFTs and online communities. And what blockchain they're on ultimately has very little significance to me. I respect the fuck out of Bored Apes. I love Doodles. I love Clonex, Azuki, all these projects. I think that those projects are cool. Do I like Ethereum as a token and as like, you know, a network and all the gas fees and all stuff? No, not really. But at the end of the day, man, like if they needed to fucking move to another blockchain, the community, if it's strong enough, they would go to any blockchain. And I think that's the mark, you know, of any good NFT project. They're there for the NFT, not for the fucking blockchain. So I think it's a little ludicrous that we have this like massive debate between Solana and Ethereum because at the end of the fucking day, man, like I don't really give a shit what blockchain it's on. If Solana fucking dies, you know, in a year from now, we'll move D gods over to another fucking blockchain. It doesn't matter to me or any, I don't think anyone in our community beyond like a level of, you know, dis, you know, beyond a level of belief. So yeah, to me, I just think it's a little silly. I do think it's fun as fuck to clown on ETH people. So I do do that from time to time. And I love the jokes about Solana because they only have like three, the network goes down, we have a phone and that like, you know, we're fucking VC centralized shitcoin or whatever. Uh, we're a database. We're yeah, oh yeah, of course. And that we are poor. And I um, embrace and I love all those jokes. And I think it's funny, but uh, man, at the end of the fucking day, man, like we're all here for JPEGs and I think we're all fucking friends and yeah. So, so pretty much uh, D-Guys is gonna move to Luna? Yeah, I think that's a good, I think that's a good idea, man. A lot of upside potential. Like they're sure, what yeah. like fractions of a penny. Upside at this point. Technically, Honestly, literally, yeah. Technically, it's just upside. Yeah. NFA, NFA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely. Uh, you know, non financial advice here, but yeah. Um, maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's honestly, like, on a, it's nice that, you know, obviously, like, that's your viewpoint, because, like, it's a similar viewpoint I have with, like, the whole, like, Solana and ETH thing. Like, uh, I, like, I just like JPEGs. I like communities. I like making money, so I'm just going to go wherever I am able to do that. Probably not Cardano, but... I, Everything you... Mm -mm, there's a lie in the middle of that sentence. Where is it? I like making money. Okay, that... I haven't fumbled, like, that, eight trades today <laughs> since I got into L.A. Okay, that that is true. I, 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 sw I swear... Dude, I lost yeah, so no. much money. <laughs> no, uh, that's also why I'm doing this podcast, because it's something that's taking me away from trading JPEGs, because uh, I am the new top signal, um, even though Always I'm kind of a bottom been. at this point. Ayo. Hey, but, yo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I no, no, I, 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 pre I appreciate that you're fudding me because you care. Because I care about you. Care. You care. You well, care. I, and you know, I try my best. That, hey, Kev, you this is up five x. You should probably sell it. It's true. And then, and then, like, I'll look at Champ. I'll be like, yeah, it could be six. <laughs> yeah. There are rare assets where that may be the case. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I know. You NFT. Hey, yo. I, just think, I just think if I mint enough shit, 
that eventually I'll, I'll, I'll like, I'll like be investing into like the next Frank D gods, you know? There's a project coming up. <laughs> 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 Tell uh, me about this project. No, no, no. No need to show, you know, I'll talk about it after. It's all yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, yeah, like, again, it's cool that, you know, you have this point of view, though, because uh, obviously, like, uh, I'm, I guess, like, I started off, like, more on the eat side. So, like, me understanding, like, them and, like, that culture, like, I always see them always, like, dunking on Seoul. And I see the people who just, like, dunk on them because it's, like, funny, like, all, like, the shit posters. But then I also see, like, all, like, the maxis who are just, like, oh, like, like, Solana's a fucking shit coin. It's just, like, dude, like, like, it's not that serious. But also, it's, like... Yo, um, Magic Eden flipped open C. Yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. absolutely hilarious. Also, shout out to Solana, dude, because, like, you guys, uh, like, uh, if your engagement is down, just do what any ETH influencer is doing. Just engagement farm the shit out of Solana. Let's Wait, go. I gotta speak on this for a second. Um, so I'm <laughs> sitting next to the number one uh, NFT inspect ranked uh, Let's go. fella on the planet. I posted, <laughs> listen, this is what happened. I posted about Solana for a week and a half, like 10 days. This is what my NFT inspect ranking did. It was at like 45, instantly shot to like nine, then eight, and then seven. And then I stopped posting my Solana, and then it instantly went back to like 50. And yes, sir. So one thing that I can yes, say, bro, is that the Solana, like, bro, the Solana community, I feel like is like super global. I feel like it's like, it's like a, Oh yeah. It's almost like this, this demographic that I didn't even know existed. And I would tweet like one thing about Solana and I'd go to bed and I would wake up and there'd be like all the, I don't even know how they found the tweet. Bro. Yeah. It's like, like I don't even yeah. know, but, yeah. I, but I felt, I did feel like they were very, um, like welcoming. And, and I think that that, this is, um, kind of a topical subject. Uh, and the, and I, like, I don't want to sp- sp- name any specific names, but like we've seen um, some discourse about ETH influencers coming in and uh, very rapidly launching projects uh, on Solana. Um, <clears throat> the point of this is not for me to offer my opinion on that. I love everybody, okay? Uh, but like most of the takes that I've seen of people saying that like are like ETH people, to be honest. I, like I feel like, I feel yeah. like Ethereum people are much more territorial. Like I feel like for if sure. Frank came over and was like the tomorrow is just like yeah i'm just gonna launch a new collection on ethereum 0.2 eth mint like it would like bro they would not like people would lose it like oh you're grifter this grifter, yeah. you know what I mean? but, but, yeah but i feel like the solana side they would support it because That's like he saying, built a community yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and i think like man at the end of the day it's just like bro ETH it's just making ETH people look a little bit like cl- like clowns like when they're kind of shitting on Solana because the thing that's tough is like man they people this is advice for ETH people in the fucking that are listening to this right now when you say the Solana network goes down like a hundred times or like goes down every other day or whatever it is you you are, you have to understand that everyone on Solana looks at you like a you know basically like a brain dead like person that just reads shit on Twitter that's literally mind controlled by whatever funny tweets that you see that doesn't do their own research and like you just don't know what the fuck is going on and, and uh, <laughs> And uh, so I'm just like, you know, when you, t- like, when you talk shit about uh, Solana, ETH, or whatever, it's just like, bro, like, what are we doing out here? Like, bro, there's projects on Solana outperforming the absolute fuck out of projects on ETH, and there's projects on ETH that do better than Sol, but it's like, it's fucking close. Like, people make money on both chains. And, yeah, it's like... And there are blockchains that exist already just for all of us to unanimously shit on anyway. Like, Cardano still exists. Yeah. Like, we're going to see... Yes, sir. Maybe 10 cents, maybe five. You never yeah. know. Yeah. You XRP, know. like, Tezos. Yeah, yeah there's plenty Safe of communities mode. that we... <laughs> there's plenty of communities that... Uh, we can unanimously have a fun time with. By the way, and, and here's my thing about Cardano, Cardano NFTs. By the way, I'm like, bro, <laughs> you know, people are like, man, go easy on the fucking Cardano NFTs. I'm like, dude, you don't know, bro. When we were coming up as Solana back when we were like fucking one one thousandth of the volume, you know what I mean? Like we were one one thousandth of the volume of, of of ETH, bro. We took all the shit, like, bro, motherfuckers were shitting on Solana nonstop. I look at it as like hazing. Like if Cardano NFTs are actually gonna make it, they better take all the fucking shit on how shit Cardano NFTs are. They better take that shit, internalize it. And if they end up making it, bro, mad respect. Just like Solana's starting to get that respect now. It's like, bro, you gotta make it through the hazing process. So yeah, like now it's like, you know, you level up, you were bullied. Now you're bullying the little fucking kid and the bigger kid's <laughs> fucking bullying you or whatever. It's like, yo, bro, we're bullying off fucking on, on Cardano. But if they make it through, then mad respect. Yeah. I, I mean, it looks unlikely. Also, it looks fucking cool. unlikely. Yeah. It's like, it's cool. You're also yeah. fighting them though because you care exactly that's bro what, that's what all this is all about you yeah know? yep yep 
Exactly, bro. Stop I, losing money on Cardano NFTs, boys. The, Come on. The Cardano thing is a, is a meme, man. I'm pretty, like, I, I'm pretty blockchain uh, yeah. agnostic. What did you say earlier? Uh, I'm pretty blockchain tri-curious. Okay. Um, Only oh, three? But, the, but the, the Cardano thing is kind of funny. I also think Solana jokes are hilarious. I also think Ethereum jokes are really funny. Yeah. People also, like, I could, get, I could open my phone right now if I was looking for it. I could find thousands of people shitting on me probably i, I don't yeah. care like that yeah I'm, yeah i'm an easy one to find about yeah that. yeah yeah yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's checks and balances but the ethereum the ethereum blockchain versus solana blockchain debate um bro people it's a bear market man people just need something to fucking the, the only thing about. that there's not a debate about between solana and eth is like solana twitter spaces are significantly better Let's like it's not it's not even close in my opinion i feel like it's not like, even close this, I feel like, unless it's a k money space, i feel like so ethereum close. twitter spaces are like ted talks and then solana uh twitter spaces are like all the people who just gave their ted talk drunk like <laughs> yeah, under the stairs yeah, outside the yeah, building yeah. like saying what they're actually thinking about that, yeah. that's that's how i would compare the two yeah like 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 ethereum spaces like people are arguing about an arts provenance and then solana <laughs> twitter spaces people are drunk eating provolone so yeah it's, like, yep, yep. it's a, little, a little bit different but you know it's like no i i say that all the time when, when i tell about when i talk to ETH people that are coming to solana i'm like look man Nobody out here is going to talk about fucking IP. Nobody's going to talk about provenance. Nobody's going to talk about a lot of the higher level stuff. You know, brand building, whatever it is. Like, it, like the higher level stuff that people talk about on ETH. At the end of the day, like a lot of the audience on Solana is ultimately just people. Like it's a joke, but it's also real. That just like cannot afford fucking hundred dollar gas fees, whatever. And like, two hundred dollar mint stuff like this. Like today, it was a sick mint that was for twenty five bucks and it like five x right. It's mm -hmm. like it's fucking sick for like a normal person that's making a normal fucking amount of money. And so you get like normal people in the door. And when you get normal people in the door, they're way less excited about like you know five year down the line IP rights or CCO or any of that shit. What they're way more excited about is like okay, what fucking utility makes sense? Like what shit like just makes fucking sense? Yeah. And those projects that can explain things cleanly clearly like do really well like i say all the time like dude utility projects actually are in the top 10 rank on market cap on solana like that's fucking nuts to me like that's not happening on eth it's a different type of ball game a little bit on soul like some of this stuff it Unless would do good on any chain because they're like fifty thousand billion dollars but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I like i think eth has like one of the best utility projects that's number one like uh board apes like you, yeah you, you get the opportunity to just buy like overly expensive merge so yeah, sick no, i love that yeah. you're right though and I, I, sorry i cut you off i no. uh that's kind of what i was saying earlier you know i was talking about like it being a really big audience like i mean you said i didn't want to say it i didn't want to sound like i was trying to like like say that people have like that everyone on Solana is poor but like seriously bro like there's a massive demographic of people who legitimately are like are just not try like that want to spend $50 they don't yeah. want to drop yeah. Like, yeah. $50 on th to pay for five transactions yeah like, not even what they're getting you yeah. know what I mean so and and I talk about this sometimes too we talk about like we see these low supply projects being heralded like there's a lot of exclusivity culture and NFTs which by the way um that sort of exclusivity the, that the way in which NFTs operate is what generates a lot of the wealth that we all enjoy so much about yep, NFTs. Yep. But if you're thinking a little bit longer term, like if you're truly, uh, I want to say, you know, like an evangelist of NFT technology um, and a big, you know, believer in mass adoption, like when you think about how traditional, uh, you know, product offerings are structured, like you structure supply to meet demand. And if you're, and if the idea is that we're going to eventually have tens, hundreds of millions of people that want to come buy NFTs and, and interact with the blockchain, yeah. people are going to gravitate to the most affordable option. Like, I don't think that's a debatable thing. So, yeah. and, and I don't really have a horse in the... I mean, obviously, I'm Ethereum native. Like, I understand Ethereum more. My project is built atop Ethereum. But, like, I can't argue with that, that people would want to come and use the cheaper blockchain. Like, duh. Yeah, and I think the thing that makes it cool to me is, like, at least for a guy like me, who I'm, like, a pretty normal dude, right, on, on most days, what I think is interesting, you, ju you just, like, attract, like, more normal fucking people. It's, like, which is sick because there's some fucking weirdos in this space, and there's definitely weirdos on Solana, don't get me wrong. But, like, you know, that's why everyone takes all these jokes with fucking stride. Nobody's, like, fucking butthurt about, like, X, Y, or Z thing. You don't have, like, thought leaders that are, like, like, we, you know, on Solana, you don't have influencers that pump projects as much as you just have all these influencers that everyone just makes fun of treats them as like counter signals and like mm -hmm. it's like there's no there's no like off balance like, there's no like off limit yeah it's just like it's <laughs> yeah. like fucking degenerate unfiltered and people just speak their minds and like you know there's no super powered like fucking you know 
class of people or whatever it is, it's very much like we're all just fucking like just logical, like rabid, like, yo, this shit's pumping. Let's fucking go. You know what I mean? Like, and, and oh, why isn't this thing pumping? Or like, why is this thing doing well? Like people want to know like answers. And I kind of like that because it reminds me more of like, it doesn't get me removed. Like I always say like Goblin Town in my mind wouldn't have run no anywhere near as hard as it did on Soul than it did on ETH because people would just be like, yo, but what's the fucking point? And they'd be like, what's the utility? When LP or what? Yeah. And that's like that annoying shit, but it's also like, yo, like, yeah, like should a project like that run as hard as some dude that's been building for fucking three, four, five months or like, you know what I mean? Like whatever. It's like, and, and the debate is there about attention or I'm, I'm totally with it. And I think God, any, the market is the market is the market. And I believe that. That being said, I'm just pointing out that it is like a different type of buyer on Soul that cares more about practicality mm -hmm. than I think that, that, that there is on, you know, ETH, which not for everyone because less of an upside for sure but like it's i think it's more exciting you know when you when you project that out in the long term building shit that matters yeah the, the, one of the things that makes me like most bullish on soul though is like at least from um like the time i've spent in like the soul community is that most people i've met are like young yeah like like because like, like, like there's like a lot of like young like like either in high school or like fresh out of high school like in college like because like soul's cheap like these like mints are like cheaper so it's yeah. like they can afford that and so like these people like this like younger generation is like the one that's like learning it like which is also like why like they're they're down to just like shoot the shit and like twitter spaces yeah. and things like that so it's like you're like like i genuinely think like solana is like the future in that sense you know Fucking hope so, man. There's a lot of problems too with Solana and like a lot of, it's an execution risk at the end of the day, like proof of history technology and what they're trying to do. Can that actually scale to these massive TPSs? Can it actually like, you know, not go down? Because the bigger it gets, the more important that is for it to not go down. These are all unanswered questions. And there's a lot of unanswered questions on Solana. And um, I don't know. And then you have the VC side. Is the thing going to dump fucking massively hard if some vcs get unlocked these are like question marks that i have no problem like admitting and saying like yeah these are issues with the with the with the network i just look at solana at the end of the day it's a high risk play 100 percent. nobody should convince themselves otherwise it is high risk but if it works man like fuck solana pay people paying in fucking real life with solana like to get out of credit card transactions nfts like all the different shit they're doing, like ticketing is not going to happen on ETH. Like it's probably going to happen on Soul. Like, you know, what we talk about when we talk about NFT ticketing, all these like different use cases that I'm like, man, fuck the UX of Solana with Phantom Wallet is the thing that makes me the most bullish because man, like a fucking kindergartner could figure out Phantom Wallet. Why the fuck does MetaMask still look like it's from the fucking 90s? I don't know, you know, but it's like, dude, there's some, there's just shit that's being built that's like practical and it's fucking exciting, but I don't want to get caught too much in the hopium either as like someone that's very susceptible to getting caught in the hopium, you know? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Which actually brings me to my next point because like how passionate and pumped up you are about this. Uh, <laughs> you seem pretty bricked up. Uh, Extremely. Like it's the elephant in the room. I think uh, yeah, we're all pretty bricked up. Yes. Um, what does being bricked up mean to you? Um, I think what being bricked up means to me like being bricked the absolute fuck up, like being bricked the fuck up. Um, I feel like it just means an intense level of just like uh, focus on enjoying the moment. And I think that's like a contradiction, but it's real too. Cause it's like, you want to be focused and locked in, but you don't want to be focused and locked in and have blinders around what's happening around you. You want to be like focused on what's happening right now and uh, being ready, you know, to use that brick in any situation possible. Bro, there's n there's no way you just gave that serious and legitimate of an answer. Oh, bro. I mean, what do you think about bricked up? Because the way I look at being bricked up I is... majorly misread the situation, <coughs> I guess. No, dude, I mean... I, what did you I'm, think? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really passionate about being bricked up. Because as I'm bricked up all the time, as everyone knows. Yeah. Um, yeah, for, for me, when I'm bricked up, it's like, you know, I'm like, I'm just like really excited about something. Like all of like my blood is just rushing to like just like a single part of my body. And I'm just like, I'm yeah. focused. Like as Frank was saying, like I'm ready... I'm pumped. I'm ready to put in the work. Um, I might, I might throw up a little bit after because I'm just like, I'm just working so hard. Yeah. But, um. Honestly, man, it's like being bricked up. It's like it's a state of mind. It's a state of being. Uh. Also, I have an erection. Oh, weirdly unrelated, but that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get sponsored. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> we, we can cut out the erection part <laughs> yeah, the, and then we don't cut it out. <laughs> uh, dude. Um, yeah. So like I said, um, yeah, definitely. I think misread the, the question. I was thinking about that term in a more, uh, 
how do I say, primitive fashion? Mm -hmm. How so? How so? Uh, yeah, please elaborate. No, yeah, please elaborate and just like just don't like don't miss any details. Like really paint us a picture of this. No, but but it really no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but I really did Respect. enjoy. Yeah, yeah but I really up. did. Yeah, somebody just gotta say no. But I, um, you know, when you talk about being bricked up, Frank, like I think you sort of, and this may be an appropriate place to wrap, like summarize like the real kind of like ethos of I think what I've learned about D gods thus far, what I've learned about trying to build my own project, what I've learned about um Web three in general, just being generally bricked. Yes. Uh despite the awful market conditions, you know, despite everybody in the world dunking on us. Um <laughs> despite Michael Saylor being down probably I don't know Fuck. like eleven to twelve digits. Um Fuck. You know, despite there being uh, a, a literal black swan event that, that would cause in any normal market, probably an 80% correction, like a, every couple days, um, you know, friends and family members of mine losing serious chunks of their net worth uh, in Celsius, um, you know, locked away in, in other vendors. Um, and, you know, despite the macroeconomic looking uh, situation, you know, looking really bad for, for probably a long time, uh, a lot of violence going on in the world, you know, uh, typically unsolved issues, some civil unrest in a lot of countries around the world. We are bricked up, right? Yes. Uh, and, and we see that yes, the yes. community Oof. remain uh, resilient. Thank God. Thank God. Strong. Oh, um, so <laughs> you know, erect. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean like a statue, like you know, yeah, no, like no. erect a building because no. we're I building. It. Yeah. That's what I figured. We're building and uh, buildings are erect. And what do you build buildings with? Bricks. Br bricks. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Is that the end of the podcast? <laughs> I, think so. I think that's the end of the show. What a fucking killer end. Right yes, sir. That's the end of the show.